to my KSP campaign. My name is Mike Aben. At the conclusion of the last episode, we left Valentina at the island airport uh, investigating the control tower there. And in order to complete this contract, she also has to investigate the pod at the hangar. So we'll head her down that way, running down these steps. And oh, <laughs> watch your step, Valentina. Steps are dangerous. Yeah, we do have some other things coming your way as well. We'll definitely be paying another visit to our trio that is on their way to Minmus that are in. They need to do another correction burn or another. Oh, there she goes again. Oh, these are dangerous steps, man. Uh, yeah, they need to do a correction burn on their way to Minmus, so we'll definitely check in on that. But <laughs> meanwhile. Oh, I wonder if she's better off jumping. Let's try to see if we can jump. Okay, now, first of all, whenever you're going to do something stupid, always do a quick save first. So why don't we do a quick save? <laughs> Wouldn't real life be nice if it was that way that you could do a quick save before doing stupid things? And then we'll see if we can climb up here, jump, and then use the uh, jet pack to break our fall. Are we ready? Here we go. All right, it's just one small step. We can do it. Here we go. Push. Ah! Okay, I'm not quite sure what happened there, but obviously she's okay. Put the jetpack away. <laughs> anyway, let's head on over to the hangar and check out the uh, burnt out pod that's there complete this contract. This contract coming, by the way, from, uh, I'll get it right this time, it's called Anomaly Surveyor Contract Pack. That's part of the co uh, Contract Configurator mod. There we go, Contract Complete. I like this little mod though, gets you out there checking out these things. There's our burnt out pod. How exciting. All right, let's head back and get on out of here. Oh, it's so nice finally having ladders on these planes. I can't wait till I get the retractable ladder. Should be getting those pretty soon. But anyway, we'll get Valentina back into the cockpit. And we'll head on out of here. Brakes off. Let's see. I think we got enough runway that way. Yeah, we don't... No, the shorter that way. We'll go... Yeah, we got enough runway to take off. This thing takes off like nothing. There we go. All right. Does anybody else find it curious that the runway at the airport is dead flat while the runway at Kerbal Space Center, at least the Tier 1 runway, is all lumpy and bumpy? Oh, it doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, while I'm out here with the Otter 1, I figured, you know what, I might as well go and check out that patch of desert that's just on the other side of the mountains to the west of the Kerbal Space Center. Um... Last episode, we had Svetlana out in the desert, but she, well, well, she crashed, didn't she? And she didn't end up collecting as much science as I would have liked to. So, uh, you know, might as well head over there. It's just a short little hop. Getting a nice view of the island airport as we are uh, blasting our way out of here. Okay, have some messages up here. Let's go through read these messages. Never forget those that gave their lives to get us where we are. Apollo 1. Well, I guess that's in reference to Apollo 1 and the, the terrible fire that killed three astronauts. I mean, it's not my Apollo 1. My Apollo 1 went fine. Is that why the pod is burnt? Really? I never ever took it that way. I mean, anyone who's ever seen one of these pods that has returned back to Earth, there's just tons of them everywhere. I mean, they're scorched to hell for obvious reasons on the outside. Wow, I don't is it just me or having the message that you know, a scorched pod, remember Kerpod I don't know, that feels like it's in bad taste to me. Remember Apollo 1, here's a scorched pod. I don't know. Maybe not. Anyway, let's check out the uh, Waypoint Manager mod here. Last episode, I was trying to see if there's a way to get the Kerbal Space Center up here as a waypoint. What's this button here do? Add a waypoint. Oh my goodness. You can just add in, put in the longitude and the latitude, and make a waypoint? 
I got some configuring to do here. <laughs> so what I did is I ended up looking up, obviously, the longitude and latitude of the Kerbal Space Center. And uh, I had to do a little bit of converting of minutes and seconds of angles to decimal points of angles, but it wasn't too hard to figure that out. Yeah, I worked out a longitude of 0.1 degrees, or not a longitude, a latitude of 0.1 degrees, I'm sorry, and longitude of 285.43 degrees. There we go. And let's see, we'll pick ourselves an icon here. Uh, let's see, what would be appropriate for the Space Center? I guess it would this antenna. I mean, there is a tracking station there. Let's go with the antenna. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Hit OK. OK. That seems to be all. I guess I just hit OK. Apply. Sure. Save. And uh, yeah, let's resume our flight. OK. Oh, it's up here. That's great. Let's uh, toggle that on. All right, let's take a look to see where it is. Looks to me like it's right on that red dot. Excellent, and the information up there is at the top. We are now 119 kilometers away, almost 120. Oh, it shouldn't be called waypoint name, of course. It should be called KSC. Let's save that. Excellent. All righty, well, not gonna need that right now, so we'll save that for our return journey. For now, let's get us down onto the desert. Alrighty, we are now over the desert, and I've already gone around and scouted out a nice flat spot to put down. Don't need a repeat performance of Svetlana's yes, uh, landing from last episode. But we're coming in, nice and soft, and touchdown. Alright, applying the brakes. Full plethora of science for us to collect, that's excellent. We'll cut turn over this way a little bit because I don't want to go over this ridge okay put on the brakes all right let's start collecting science so we got a crew report uh, atmospheric scan material study come on material there it is mystery goo and a temperature scan excellent all right now let's go out there and do the EVA part and well, I'm a little why do I have an EVA report I've done Oh my goodness, these are mountains. How the earth, this is mountains? I'm in mountains? I mean, I knew I, what threw me is I knew I had an EVA report over the desert because I've been in the desert a couple of times, actually. Oh, I don't want to overwrite the EVA report. Let's store that current EVA report in the capsule. Okay, I don't have an EVA report to do. Which I suppose makes sense because Svetlana did an EVA report in the mountains. Well, that is really weird. Does that mean all the science I just did were all in the mountains? Should check this out. See the goo. Okay, review the data. I'm in the mountains. All right, well, amazing. <laughs> well, that turned out better than I would have guessed. I mean, I guess I still have some desert stuff to get, but uh, I suspect there was more stuff for me to collect in the mountains. And this isn't some tiny little sliver of mountains either. If you take a look at the Kerbal Engineer's biome indicator, we're still in mountains now. This isn't some weird little glitch. This is a good patch of mountain, though it doesn't look like mountains. Still in the mountains. Still in the mountains. Still in the mountains. Well, let's get Waypoint Manager going here. Oh, there, we just switched to deserts. And there's our waypoint for the Kerbal Space Center. Excellent. Have a heading of 82 degrees. We'll latch onto that and get ourselves on over there. Now, as I got closer to the Kerbal Space Center, I started to recognize that I wasn't quite happy where the icon exactly was. So I started playing around with the, the latitude. Trying to see if I can get it to be right over the Kerbal Space Center, sort of off to the side like that. You can see I also changed the icon to blue. I don't know. I don't know why I changed it to blue. It looked friendlier looking to me, I think. Let's try a negative latitude here. Let's see how that works. Put that in. Ooh, right on the runway. That's nicer. I think I want it though right, because I'm not always going to be going for the runway. 
Well, most times I will be. Let's see if we can get it oh, right in the middle of the Kerbal Space Center. Ooh. Look at that. And we go flying over top. I like the longitude I like. It looks like it's kind of exactly halfway between the runway and the launch pad. Very close to halfway between. No, 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 I'm happy with that. So, all that's left to do is to get this puppy down onto the runway and call this mission done. And the completion of uh, my last few missions has improved my cash flow to such a degree that actually I can afford to begin the upgrading process on the last two uh, parts of the Kerbal Space Center that I got left to upgrade, and that is the runway and the space plane hangar. Now, of course, they're going to take a little time to upgrade, but once they do, it's going to be great because, uh, for instance, I'll be able to get some better planes going. I, I'm getting tired of the planes that I got. You're probably getting tired of them too, but the Otter 2 for especially is right at the top end in terms of part count and size of plane, and uh, I should be getting some new aerodynamic parts soon once the uh, Research and Development Center upgrades. So, yeah, better things coming up. Okay, so bear with me for just a moment. <laughs> I'm not going to spend very much time with this. I know watching things deorbit. Uh, stages, empty stages, deorbiting is not exciting, but I don't know, this got me excited. Uh, this is the spent stage from uh, Carpal 2, re-entering into the atmosphere, but what I want you to pay attention to is how this thing starts to orient itself as the atmosphere starts to bite in. In the past, this thing went down prograde nose first, which exposes all of the vulnerable parts like the parachutes and things to atmospheric heating. It's much better for it to go in retrograde, but watch as this thing starts to turn around. It wants to go retrograde now. This is awesome. Right before I, I was thinking I was gonna have to start putting air brakes on these things once I start to unlock it, but and the they're not. It just wants now to go uh, engines first, which is exactly the way I want it to go down. And why? Because I've switched these little tail fins. Now that I have uh, the 1.25 meter reaction wheels, I can put that on the stages. That is the main component of attitude control during ascent. Don't need big control surfaces anymore. Little stages, smaller uh, lift, or little stages, little, little fins, less lift. Big heavy engine at the one end, now it wants to go down backwards. And it wasn't just this stage. This one here is the spent fuel stage from Junk Sat 2 from the last episode, the episode before, I don't know. But same thing, wants to orient itself retrograde, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Makes recovery much more predictable. Very, very happy with this. Well, from there, let's check in on Bill and Carol and Aleel. Now over a day into their mission to fly by Minmus. And they're about another day away from a... Woo! Wow, isn't that pretty? A bit of an unusual perspective with the moon above Kerbin and both of them about the same apparent size. Yeah, I think we're a little too far away from Minmus to pick it out really clearly. I'm sure it's in there somewhere, but you wouldn't be able to see any sort of a sphere or anything but uh let's turn back yeah i love that view that's beautiful let's admire that for just a little bit but anyway these guys are about a day away from a correction burn that they have to do so well let's time warp out to that you know this this game can really be beautiful sometimes there we go we'll watch the moon kind of spin off you know, one of the things I don't particularly like about these missions, I mean, this is going to be, or this particular mission, this is going to be a two-week mission, and I didn't build any extra space into this, into, to give these guys an opportunity to move around. Um, you know, they're, they're crammed in as Mac, oops, what's this? Oh, launch pads reconditioned, yeah, so what? Um, you know, they're crammed in as tight as they can be, maximum, maximum occupancy, and to be in a capsule like this for two weeks with nowhere to go? I don't know. Feels a little much. I mean, even the Apollo astronauts, I mean, on the way out, they had the LEM that they could go into. Uh, and then they obviously could get out on the moon. I don't know. If it, it feels it feels 
a little cruel to cram them in like this. And I know Kerbal Space Program doesn't model anything like that, but uh, I would consider this about the maximum I would do with Kerbals um, with the space constraints that they currently have. So anyway, we'll get ready for our burn here. This is not a time-sensitive burn. I don't have to worry to get it down to the second at all. So we'll do the view, though, from Minmus, because I do want to... This is all about tuning this encounter. Get us on the maneuver node. Again, not really worried about the time, so I'm not, I'm not paying that much attention to that. Then we'll uh, start throttling up here. And I want to get that up into the equatorial plane of Minmus and get the encounter in around about 10, 12 kilometers. You know, it's, it's getting really sensitive. I'm going to cut down the thrust on this a little bit. Let's see here. Come on. Push that up, push it up, push it up, push it up. Ooh. I'm a little close here. Uh, let's forget about the maneuver node. That's not really helping. Okay. Well, what I think I'll do is I'll, I'll add another maneuver node. Um, I just don't want to shoot blindly here. So I'll zoom out, put a maneuver node. And I want to get this maneuver node nice and close to the current location of the Kerpalo. So I'll use... Dragging it around, I find, gets frustrating. So I'll use the time controls that are built into precise node. Uh, click, 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 click. Let's get that close. 30, 20 minutes. Do one other one. Three minutes. Three minutes away. That's that's good enough. Okay. So, let's see. So, obviously, I have to do some positive normal here. It's going to be very tiny adjustments. A little higher than that. There we go. That looks good. We're about 21 kilometers away from Minmus. I do want to get closer. So let's try a little pro oh, retro. Oh, that that's having way too much of an effect. The prograde and retrograde burns. Let's try some radial in us. Ooh, that looks better. Ooh, that looks great. Yeah, right about there. Now this again is not a time sensitive burn at all. So I don't have to time warp out to that particular maneuver node that is just a little less than three minutes away. I'm just gonna burn this right now. It really won't make any difference. I do my best to put my craft on that jumpy. <laughs> trying to click on the periapsis. Well, there we go. Everything's jumping around. I'll try to put it on that jumpy maneuver node icon. That's good enough. And I'm going to use RCS and just give little puffs, just little taps on the H key. Okay. So a couple of little taps on there. That's it. I'm done. That is good enough. We will fine tune that encounter once we enter into the sphere of influence of Minmus. So that's going to be good for now. We'll get alarm clock and we will uh, set an alarm for entering into the sphere of influence for Minmus, which is going to be eight days from now. <laughs> so we'll get back to these guys in another eight days. You can see they still have plenty of life support left, so that's a very good thing. Uh, and that's going to have to end it for this particular episode. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.